Okay. Well, hello, peoples of the internet. My name is Kevin, and welcome to the first day of the Reading Rush 2020. I am so excited. So, hi, everybody. I am so excited for the Reading Rush. I am ready to conquer my TBR, get all of those badges because I'm a badge. Where was the word I was going for? <laughs> Where was I going with that? I nearly said badge enthusiast, but that's not the word I was looking for. Badge collector, collector. Collector was the word I was looking for. Why was that so hard to find? So yeah, I'm just excited to collect all the badges and just slay the Reading Rush 2020 And I hope any of you guys who are also participating You also have a very successful Reading Rush and you also have a fun Reading Rush And also if this is your first ever time taking part in the Reading Rush I hope you have a very fun and successful time. Now before we start and get into all of the reading and talking about the challenges and stuff like that I do want to just mention that I'm very much aware that it is currently daytime outside and you're probably wondering Kevin, why are you starting the vlog when usually the reading rush starts at midnight your time? You're very correct there and it makes perfect sense. However, this year I have changed up how I am taking part in the reading rush because I wanted to suit myself a bit better because of course, as you guys all know, I am doing daily vlogs for the reading rush. I'm going to be putting up seven vlogs for each of the seven days of the reading rush. And for that, I wanted to make sure I wasn't stressed or rushing to get videos edited and uploaded. So what I have done is I have used Mr. Brain. And basically what I have done is that I am basically working in an Australian time zone. So what I mean by that is currently it is 3 p.m. Irish time, which would make it midnight in Australia right now, especially on the east coast of Australia. It is midnight, meaning the reading rush has begun over in Australia. So that is what I am doing for myself. That means it gives me from 3 p.m. today, which is Sunday, to 3 p.m. tomorrow, Monday, to basically vlog for the first day. Then it also gives me a couple of hours to edit my video and get it uploaded for that same day. So that when you're watching my day one vlog, it is still day one of the reading rush. If that makes sense, I hope it does. You'll basically understand as I start uploading, you'll start to figure out what I'm doing. Like, we'll just make more sense when you see all of the times I'm uploading. You'll be like, oh, I see what he's doing. I'm just basically making it easier for myself because vlogging and uploading every single day is stressful enough as it is. I don't want to add any more stress to it because I do enjoy uploading and vlogging every day. So I just don't want to have any stress or anything like that because we're having no negative vibes. This is a positive zone where we're gonna read great books. All of these books are gonna be five stars. I am manifesting this right now and I'm also manifesting it for you that your book you're currently reading is going to be a five star or your next book, it's going to be a five star. Good books only is allowed. That is what we're going for for this reading rush. Good books only. Now, let's move on to the good stuff. So if you haven't seen my Reading Rush TBR video, I will link it down below in the description and I will also link it up here. I can't remember ever which side it's going to be when I'm editing, if it's up here or if it's up there. Anyways, it's linked up there. So make sure you go watch that video to find out all of the books that I'm going to be reading for the Reading Rush because I'm not gonna go through them all right now. But what I wanted to also do for the Reading Rush this year is I want to incorporate you guys more into it because I know so many of you guys may not be participating because maybe you don't have the time or you have other things going on that you just can't participate right now. And I still want you guys who aren't participating to be able to participate with me if that makes sense so what i'm going to do is over on my instagram account i am going to basically be putting up two books that i'm thinking about reading and i'm going to let you guys decide what book i read the two books that i am considering being my first book that i read for the reading rush are meet cute club by jack harbin and this book was for the challenge read a book that cover matches your birthstone and then the other book that i picked out to possibly be my first book i read is Love Creekwood by Becky Abertali. And this is a Simon Verse novella. And I have chosen this book for the challenge. Read a book that inspired a movie. If you saw my TBR video, you would know that I'm kind of twisting this in a way to make it work because this didn't necessarily inspire a movie or anything. But when I bought this, there was a sticker on it that said, watch the new show, Love Victor on Hulu. So, what I'm doing in my fantasy and making it work for me is I'm saying that this book inspired Love, Victor, the TV show. So, 
that's what I'm doing. These are the two books I am deciding between. So I'm going to do like a poll over on my Instagram and see which one that you guys pick. So if you are not following me on Instagram, make sure that you do. We're almost at 10,000 on Instagram and that is insane. And I would love to hit it as soon as possible. So if you're not following me already over on Instagram, I really appreciate if you did. And also I will be posting my Instagram challenges that are going to be posted on the Reading Rush's Instagram account every single day. As of right now, it hasn't been announced what the challenge is yet, so I can't do it, but I will be posting my Instagram challenge when I know what it is. So that is everything. I'm gonna go take the Instagram picture to decide what I'm reading first. But also another thing I wanna talk about is the video challenges. So if you guys follow the Reading Rush over on their YouTube channel, you would know that the Reading Rush are not doing daily video challenges this year. Usually every year with the Reading Rush, there's always video challenges hosted by different booktubers. And basically a booktuber uploads a video onto the Reading Rush's channel, giving you a video challenge, and then you just do a video with it or you incorporate into your vlogs. And that's what you do. But this year, it's a little bit different. So I think the video challenge for this year is to just do a reading vlog and then they also set like these three different mini challenges to incorporate into your reading vlogs. So what I am going to be doing is each of the three mini challenges I'm going to be using in every single one of my vlogs. So those three mini challenges are to make a cup of tea or coffee and if you guys know me I am Irish, we absolutely love tea. So that challenge is literally not a challenge for me. It's already part of my normal routine every single day. So it's literally not a challenge. But for that challenge, I think I might share with you guys a different mug that I use every single day because I love a good mug collection. Like, I don't know what it is, but like mugs make me so happy. Like I love seeing what kind of mugs everyone has. Like, do they have like Disney ones? Do they have like funny mugs? Like I always love to see them. So I'm gonna be sharing some of them throughout out the blogs for each time I make myself a cup of tea. And then the second mini challenge that they have is to have a book cover inspired by an outfits or like have your outfit match the book cover. That was a trend recently over on Bookstagram on YouTube and stuff. And so basically you just match your outfit to a book. And then the final mini challenge is to share a book memory. And I have several that I can use for this. So every single vlog, I will just share with you a different book memory that I have. And I'm gonna be doing all three of those challenges for every single vlog. And that's how I will incorporate video challenges every single day. Also make sure you go and follow me over on the Reading Rush's website. I'll link my profile down below in the description. That is all of the talking that I need to do. It is time for me to start reading, but I need to go take the Instagram first to see which book I'm gonna be reading. Okay guys, so it has been 30 minutes since I posted my poll and the winner was... Love Creekwood, you guys came through. Thank you so much. I just knew I could trust you guys, so it ended up getting 53% of the vote, but the vote was so freaking close. And I've also decided that I'm gonna pull up the poll and after 30 minutes, whatever is winning at the 30 minute mark, that's the book that I'm going to pick because if I leave it up for 24 hours, it, like I won't get any reading done. So I'm leaving up for 30 minutes to see what wins. It's still up my story now, but like after 30 minutes, I'm just gonna pick whatever it's winning. So this was what was winning at the time I picked it. So it's time to go start and I am so happy already. Why am I getting emotional right now? I'm, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. That was a little bit embarrassing. I'm just so happy to finally be back and see Simon and, oh. If you guys don't know this book series and these characters just literally mean the absolute world to me and I'm just so happy to finally be reconnected with them all. The minute Simon's name is mentioned, guys, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm actually going to cry the minute I see it. I'm going to start reading now. <laughs> I just flipped over the page and I see Simon's email. <laughs> I'm not okay. Like, 
I've read three pages. <laughs> I just love these characters so much. And I hear my dog, Bella, I need comforting right now. Come here, come here. I need love right now, I'm a bit emotional. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I love you, you good girl. You're such a good girl, you are. You're such a baby. Yes, the camera's right there. <laughs> okay, so I think I needed to let that cry out because it was going to happen with this book anyways. It's probably gonna happen again. I'm not gonna lie about it, it might happen again. I just need to get that out. <laughs> I've literally read three pages. Nothing even happened to make me cry. It's just, I'm back with the characters, so I got emotional, so. We love an emotional queen. So Bella has now joined me. So she is just sitting here. I have a little reading companion with me. Okay, so I've only read uh, 24 pages, but like it's kind of a fifth of the book because it's only 100 pages long. But I just wanted to stop really quickly because Cassie and Molly were mentioned and I was not expecting that. So if you guys aren't familiar with like Becky's whole universe and like all of her books, Basically, Cassie and Molly are from the book The Upside of Unrequited, which is another book that I really enjoyed by Becky Abertalli. They just made an appearance, or like, they were mentioned because they're related to Abby, which is one of the main characters in Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I just wasn't expecting them to be announced, and I just got all the feels again because it's even more of like Becky's characters coming together and it just makes my heart so happy. Like I said, I'm only on page 24, but guys, <sighs> My feels, I am getting hit with like all of the feels because Simon is like emailing Blue still. I'm gonna keep calling him Blue because I don't wanna give away in case you've never read Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda yet. I don't wanna give away who Blue is. Basically, Blue and Simon keep emailing each other and <laughs> I ship them so much and I just love them. A few moments later. Simon... I am sorry, Simon is me. <laughs> I'm actually scared. I have said this for years, how Simon and me are very similar. We have very similar characteristics, very similar personalities. If you read the book, you know, you might see similarities like all my friends do, all my family do. Me and Simon are very, very similar. He just said something that is too scarily similar to me. He's basically in his email talking to Blue about Halloween because it's currently Halloween right now and he's talking about dressing up and stuff like that and he says that like he's drunk or whatever and that he saw like a nude Mickey Mouse. Someone wearing like Mickey Mouse ears and he was like naked running across campus or something. And then this is exactly what he says. Like this is not a spoiler this sentence but literally like it's me. He goes, nude Mickey Mouse, whoever you are, you who are joyful and free, and I love that for you. Guys, how often do I always say, love that for you, love that for me? Simon just said, love that for you. I am telling you, me and Simon are the same person. This is actually scary. Guys, I am on page 107. I'm literally three pages away from finishing it. But Simon literally just said, my inner goddess trusts no one on April Fool's Day anymore. He just mentioned his inner goddess. I just read Fifty Shades of Grey. What? What is this? What is this? So I finished it and I loved it so, so much. I am going to give this a five out of five stars just because I love these characters so, so much. They have such a special place in my heart. So it just has to get five out of five stars in my opinion. And I'm just so happy that I read it. And the way it ends, it's kind of like cliffhanger-ish. But if you've watched Love, Victor, then you understand what happens and like it's not really a cliffhanger because you you get more in Love, Victor, so you'd know. So if any of you have read this and you felt like the ending was a bit of a cliffhanger and you're like a bit open-ended, go watch Love, Victor and everything will be explained. That is book one of The Reading Rush Complete and a five out of five star book. And it is also a total of 111 pages long. So I've read 111 pages so far for The Reading Rush. 
Love that for me. But anyways, now I think I'm gonna go tick off one of the challenges and make myself a cup of tea. I have my cup of tea. Actually, my mother was already making tea when I went to go make it, and so she just made me a cup, so we love my mom, absolute queen, we stan. And she also ended up using a mug that I wanted to show in the vlog. And this is my cup. It is a 101 Dalmatians cup, and I literally love it so, so much. This is a mug that I got when I was so young. I literally don't even remember how old I was when I got this. I think... I want to say 9 or 10. It was when I first went to Disneyland Paris and I got this mug when I was there and I've had it ever since. And it's been one of my favourites because I used to love 101 Dalmatians when I was growing up. Like, I was obsessed. I always wanted a pet Dalmatian. Like, I was just so obsessed with them. As I've grown up, 101 Dalmatians isn't one of my favourite Disney movies, but I still obviously absolutely love and adore it, but it's not one of my favourites. Like, I definitely have more that I prefer. But this mug definitely still has a special place in my heart because 9 or 10 year old Kevin was obsessed with this and he always wanted a Dalmatian. Still do. Like, if I could get a Dalmatian, ugh, I would love that. We love a good cup of tea, like, honestly. So, anyways, that is that done. And I'm trying to think of other things that I need to do. I know I need to match my outfit to a book. And there is one I think I could match with what I'm wearing right now. But it's not a book that I'm reading in this vlog. Like, obviously, the first book I read today was Love Creekwood. This does not really match because they're two different shades of yellow. So that doesn't work. But one of the other books that are on my TBR, I think could work so i might just do that to tick off this challenge so the book i am referring to is date me bryson keller does it count is this matching <laughs> i want to say that it matches like oh it really doesn't let's pretend i didn't just try and do that um does this work are these the same shades we got no no they're not Okay, we're gonna leave this challenge until tomorrow when I'm not wearing what I'm wearing because I need to get something to match. I actually have the perfect outfit that I can wear because I can wear it for the next book that I'm going to be reading, which is Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin. Because this was the other book that was on the poll for which books to read. So I'm going to read this one next because I read Love Creekwood very fast. So I don't want to put up another poll already and be that annoying person who just puts polls on their Instagram story. So I'm just going to not do that. And just because this was the other book that was in that poll, I'm just going to read this one next. And this is obviously a pink and I have a pink t-shirt that I just recently got that's going to work perfectly for this so I have my outfit thing ready for the, tomorrow when I can do it I don't know what that was but I just wanted to vlog and let you guys know I'm about to start my next book I was so scared as to what this was and then I realized that's just pillows <laughs> anyways I'm about to start reading Meet Q Club by Jack Harbin and I just wanted to vlog just to let you all know also in bed it is currently almost 11 p.m so the reading rush is almost officially starting in my time zone even though i started hours ago but that's fine but start let's see how we go and i'll see how much we can get read before i get too sleepy okay so i literally just picked up the book and i was turning the pages to like literally start reading and before the book even starts there is a page that says Content warning, I think it's super important to be aware of what you're consuming and it is never my goal to trade my reader's safety for an unexpected twist or shocking moment. Because of that, I feel it is necessary to include a list of possible triggering content that could potentially upset readers. If you want to go into this story without any warnings, you're more than welcome to skip this page. And then it gives you a list of content warnings such as alcohol and or drug abuse mentions of child neglect, mentions of homophobia, and on-page sex scenes. I really appreciate being given content warnings before I read a book, especially the mentions of homophobia, so I really appreciate that. We need to make this a common thing in the publishing world. Content warnings are important, trigger warnings are important. That is it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Okay guys, so I am now up to page 68 of Meet Cute Club. And so far I am actually enjoying it and it's very steamy. Like I'm over here just like, whew. Need to fan myself. 
like might just have to turn the fan on because steamy so yeah because this is an adult romance book it is very steamy and i'm living for it and i haven't read a male male romance that has been steamy since i read red white and royal blue last year so i'm in desperate need of one so i'm glad i picked this up basically this book follows this guy named jordan and a guy named rex and jordan is this guy who loves to read romance novels and he just loves all of those kind of books and he runs his own book club called the meet cute club and he is the owner of this book club and he has i think like six other people that take part in the book club and one thing that he does with the book club is he sources a lot of the books for the members and that's one of the reasons why people haven't left the club is because he's actually providing all of the books that they read and so one day when he is buying the new books that they're going to be reading for the book club he goes into his regular bookshop and he is about to check out with the books when there is a new guy working there which is Rex and basically Rex starts making fun of the books that Jordan is purchasing because they're like all the romance books or like the grandma books and all that kind of stuff. So Jordan gets defensive about this because people always give all the stereotypes about romance books and basically they kind of like bicker back and forth the two of them and it's like really obvious that like Rex is flirting like being rude in a way like he's being flirty but like Jordan's taking very offensive to it. So that happens and then the next meet cute club date when they're discussing the book, they get a knock at the door. And little do we know, it is Rex showing up to the book club to join. And stuff unfolds from there. I don't want to say anything else because that will get into spoilers and stuff. But I am really enjoying it so far. And as I said, it is steamy, which I am living for. And the tension in here is kind of everything. I am living for it. Good morning, everyone. It is the next day and it is currently 11.30 in the morning. I have been up for a little while and I have made more progress with Me Cute Club. I am now up to page 119 and so far still I'm really enjoying this. Right now where I am, it is getting very steamy and I'm just like living for it. I did not realize how much I like reading adult romance and I definitely should read more because I am enjoying this. So definitely is a genre I need to be reading more of. And also I have just done the match a book cover to your outfit challenge as one of the video challenges for the reading vlogs. And so I'll insert a picture of it here. And that is my attempt because I'm wearing this t-shirt, which is a Taylor Swift merch t-shirt. Love this like pink and everything. And it works perfectly with the book I am currently reading because we're the same shade. That is that challenge done. And before I continue trying to finish this, I decided I would do the other video challenge, which is to share a bookish memory. The bookish memory that I want to share for today's vlog is one that is embarrassing. And one when I think about it, I'm like, that was so awkward, why did I do that? So basically, this story takes place in BookCon 20... Ooh, last year, 28, no, 2017. BookCon 2017. So I was at BookCon and I was enjoying life, having a great time with all of the bookish stuff with my friends Purina, Sandy, and my cousin Denise. All three of us were thriving, living our best lives. So it came to the day when we were going to go to one of our author meet and greets, which was Victoria Aveyard, which if you don't know, she is the author of the Red Queen series. And we all had tickets to meet and greet her and to get our book signed. And so we all went to that signing. So while I was in line to meet Victoria, I was thinking in my head, what am I gonna say to her? Like, what should I say to her? Because I don't want this awkward vibe when I'm just there like, looking to get my book signed, like I was like, what am I going to say? So I remembered that there is a character in the book called Evangeline that I absolutely love and she is an LGBTQIA plus character and she is represented in the books and I personally really appreciated that because especially in, at that time, the very popular YA young adult like fantasy books didn't usually have characters in the LGBT community. So I was very happy to see one. So I was like in my head, I'm gonna thank her for writing this character, for including her and say how much I appreciate it. So I was like, that's great. I have what I'm going to say. So then it comes to my turn. I like scoot on up to the little stand and I say to the man, run in the sand. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Anyways, I like walked up to where she was. I gave her my books to sign, everything was great. And then I started to talk to her. What I said was, I was like, 
Oh, I just want to mention that I really appreciate you writing the character of Evelina and how much I love the representation of her. Evelina means so much to me and I just really appreciate that you wrote Evelina. So then Victoria kind of looked up to me and she was like, oh my God, you're so welcome. I really love that character too. She's one of my favorites. And I just kept talking about Evelina and then we took a photo and I walked away with my signed books thinking everything went perfectly. So then after I was talking with Sandy, Prina and Denise and I was like, what did you guys say? Blah, 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 blah. And then I told them that I was saying how much I loved Evelina and all of this stuff. And the three of them started to look at me like, what? And I was like, why are you guys looking at me like that? Like, what's so weird about what I'm saying? And they're like, Kevin, the character's name is Evangeline, not Evelina. So, what I just did is I went up to an author telling her how much I appreciated this character while saying the wrong freaking name. How embarrassing is that to like say how much you love and adore this character but then you say the wrong character name. Like, clearly you don't love them if you don't know their freaking name. It was so embarrassing because the fact that Victoria just kept going on with it like it never corrected me and she just smiled away and was happy and I'm just there saying the wrong name making up some random character in my head because she was probably sitting there like who the frick is Evelina who was he talking about and I'm just there thinking I'm being great having a great conversation but in reality it was awkward because I was saying the wrong name the entire time and that is my embarrassing bookish story for today's video I hope you enjoyed now we're going to go back to reading This bog is so steamy. I'm like, <gasps> wow, <laughs> I'm getting flustered. <laughs> Honestly. Okay guys, so I have ended up finishing Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin. And I think my final rating for this is going to be a three out of five stars. As much as I did enjoy the steam and it was very steamy and I loved that. I do have a couple of issues that I had with it but like it still was a good book like I definitely enjoyed myself while reading it and I definitely didn't hate it or anything but there was kind of just stuff I wanted more of like I wish the relationship had have been developed a bit more and maybe that's because it was so short and that's probably why it didn't feel as developed to me so I kind of wish we got more of the relationship and more of the building of the relationship. I also felt this was super cheesy at times and like I am no stranger to loving some cheese and I love a bit of cheesy romance like I stan I love all of that kind of stuff but there are definitely parts in here where it was just a bit too cheesy for me and I was kind of getting taken out of the story and then also some of the dialogue in here just didn't really flow well for me like I'm someone who really enjoys good dialogue in a book and some of the dialogue in here it just didn't feel right for me but other than that I definitely did enjoy the book and the romance was very cute and even though I found it cheesy at times it still was very cute and it warmed my heart so my final rating is going to be a three out of five stars and also before I get to ending this vlog I do want to mention that I actually am going to give Love Creekwood four out of five stars I felt like yesterday I was just like in a zone where I was like oh my god I love this book oh, best thing ever but like I just feel like Four out of five stars fits this better because it was nothing that's like the best thing in the entire world that I've ever read. So it didn't deserve the full five stars, I think. Even though obviously I loved everything about it, like there wasn't really much for me to critique, but it just doesn't have the full five star potential. So yes, we have come to the end of the vlog and you may be wondering why haven't I done the Instagram challenge yet? I definitely did try to do the Instagram challenge and like I just couldn't do this challenge. So the challenge for today was to recreate a book cover for your Instagram. That was your Instagram challenge. And today's challenge was hosted by Jamie from Absorbed in Pages. And the photo is everything. And guys, I tried to do it with Meet Cute Club and I was trying to be Rex, which is this character here holding the stack of books. It was just not a great time. Make sure you go over and check my Instagram to see my attempt at it. Attempt is definitely the word for it because I definitely failed this challenge so much. So yeah, that is going to be it for day one of The Reading Rush. Let me know down below in the comments what books you have read. Have you finished any yet? I have finished two, so I'm feeling very motivated. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments below what books you are reading. Have you read any of the books that I read in this vlog? Let me know your thoughts down below. And other than that, I shall see you tomorrow for day two of The Reading Rush. So goodbye, guys. Hey,